Uh, well, good afternoon and welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Associate Professor John Williams. I'm the Deputy Director of the UQ Cybersecurity Initiative. Um, I'm, I'm coming in remotely today. I had planned to be on, on campus, but unfortunately I woke up with a sore throat and I just felt in, uh, in these COVID times that it was um, uh, a wise move to, to stay off campus. So uh, thanks very much for those in the room who are going to help me uh, facilitate this session. So we're here this afternoon to discuss interdisciplinary education strategies and tactics within cybersecurity. This is an area very close to my heart. I was closely involved in the design and the delivery of the University of Queensland's Master of Cybersecurity, and I'm sure that Ryan will be talking about that today. Um, so what we're going to do is I'll, I'll briefly, briefly um, introduce our three speakers for today, um, and then they will present on a, on a topic of their choice around cybersecurity education uh, for between 10 to 15 minutes each, and, and I'll ask the speakers uh, please, if you can try to keep to time, um, that would be gratefully appreciated. And then uh, we, have a, we have a discussion question which I'll present to the group after that, and then we'll open the floor for questions from the audience, both in the room and remotely. Uh, so with that out of the way, um, I, and, and I'll, I'll introduce all three speakers, and then Ryan, you can start. Um, so our first speaker today is Professor Ryan Coe, who established UQ Cyber, uh, the institution's first interdisciplinary cybersecurity education and research program. He's currently chair and director of UQ Cyber and has previously, previously held scientific leadership roles at Hewlett Packard Labs and at the University of Waikato, New Zealand. His research has been central and contributed to many cloud security, data provenance and CM tools across both open stack, open source and industry commercial tools. He's published over 100 publications in top venues and is a fellow of the Cloud Security Alliance and a recipient of the ISC Squared Information Security Leadership Award. He holds PhD and Bachelor of Engineering degrees from Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. He's the co-founder of New Zealand Cybersecurity Challenge and also drafted the New Zealand Quality Agency's Level 6 Cybersecurity quality uh, qualifications as part of his role there, um, assisting the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. So that's Associate Professor Ryan Coe, he'll be up first. Our second speaker this afternoon is Mr. Koji Nakao. He received a Bachelor of Engineering degree of Mathematics from Waseda, Waseda University in Japan in 1979. He joined KDDI in 1979 and has since been engaged in research on communication protocols and information security technologies for telecommunications in the KDDI laboratory. I believe that's the uh, translation of the National Institute of Information and Communications Technology. His current interests are in Internet of Things security, 5G security and supply chain security. His present position is as a distinguished researcher to manage research activities for cybersecurity in NICT and is a guest professor of Yokohama National University. He has also played an advisory role on cybersecurity for the Japanese Cabinet Secretariat since April 2018. Mr. Koji Nakao. Our third speaker today is uh, John. Sorry, we lost your audio. There might be something wrong with your mic. Have me? No, it's okay. Okay, thank you. Did you get Did you get the last of the previous bio? No. Uh, if you could, uh, could trouble you to repeat again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. Yes. So Koji received a BE degree of mathematics from Waseda University in Japan, 1979. Since joining the National Institute of Information and Communications Technology that same year, he has been engaged in research on communication protocols and information security technologies. His current interests are security related to Internet of Things, 5G and supply chain. He holds currently a position of distinguished researcher at NICT and a guest researcher of Yokohama National University on IoT security. He's been an advisor to the Japanese Cabinet Secretariat in Cybersecurity since April 2017. Our third speaker today will be Professor Hiroaki Kikuchi. Kikuchi Sensei is a professor at the Department of Frontier Media Science in the School of Interdisciplinary Mathematical Sciences. 
He's also Meiji University's Associate Dean of the Graduate School and Deputy Director of Information Infrastructure Department. He is a visiting researcher at the RIKEN Center for Advanced Intelligence Project and the board chairman there. He holds roles in the Japanese Computer Emergency Response Team and as a counselor, he's in the Office of Healthcare Policy in the Cabinet Secretariat for the Government of Japan. He received BE, ME, and PhD degrees from Meiji University, the most recent in 1988, and has worked in Tokai University from 1994. Since 2013, his main research interests are network security, cryptographical protocols, privacy preserving data mining, and fuzzy logic. He received Best Paper Award at the Symposium on Cryptography and Information Security in 1996. So as you can see, the records and, and careers of our three speakers this afternoon are most impressive. So I'd like to invite Professor Ryan Poe from the University of Queensland um, to uh, give you a presentation. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, John, we lost you, but I think you are inviting me to speak next. So <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah. I'll share my screen first. Uh, is this showing up on online? Yeah, okay, thank you. So um, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here speaking to everyone across in Japan and Australia. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, uh, the Yagara and the Turbo people, uh, and the elders past and present for the custodianship of the land. And um, it's my pleasure to talk to you about the interdisciplinary uh, cybersecurity research today. I'm just going to give a kind of a 10 minute overview and then I'll hand over to the other speakers as well. Uh, a little bit about myself, you know, I, I just put a few pictures here because it's the middle of the afternoon. So I thought, uh, you know, I'll just show you a few pictures and uh, it's a bit more interesting. Uh, this is a picture of me and Dr. Toshinobu uh, Yasuhira. Uh, who's the deputy director at Japan Police, and we <laughs> this is us, uh, and this is me half my size, uh, five four five years ago in Singapore in the poll. Um, I want to share a bit about my experience so that uh, it sets the context of what I'm going to speak. So as as uh, John has introduced, I created and you know led the creation of the new uh, Master of Cybersecurity program in 2012, and uh, since then you know it led to the National Curriculum and the IC Squared uh, CCSP certification. And then a uh, university asked me to do an across disciplinary uh, Master of Security and Crime Science. That's when I got uh, a crash course in criminology and crime science and the differences between. And also uh, I have the, uh, the privilege and opportunity to also start at UQ, the interdisciplinary uh, Master of Cybersecurity degree. And then uh, more recently, I'm serving in some of these boards, uh, giving advice on curriculum design and the digital workforce. So I hope I know what I'm talking about. And I've taught uh, thousands of students. I also want to share a few photos because we are old friends here. Uh, just, you know, photos of uh, Mr. Koji Nakao, uh, who was generous enough to, you know, uh, give, give us a nice, uh, my team and I, a nice uh, sashimi treat when I was in Tokyo. Uh, fantastic. And also uh, Ms. Kana Shinoda and also uh, you know, at the SecCon and uh, Dr. Daisuke Inoue as well. Thank you so much for your hospitality. I wish that we have the chance to host you here in the next uh, edition and we can take more photos and maybe we can reminisce in five years time. All right, so these are some of the other photos. Nice, uh, nice food as well, you know. Uh, I, I get easily tempted by food. So, you know, this is... <laughs> and also this is uh, uh, some of my, my team here. Um, the... Uh, Cameron, for example, now he's with New Zealand Police, yeah, so uh, they're going places. A little bit about UQ. UQ is, uh, we're probably one of the top 50 universities in the world, evidenced by different ranks. And in, um, in a non-COVID environment, we will be showing you around our campus. So this is our campus. And this is the, the circle is where we are meeting. More specifically, we are at, I think, this, this building here. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, somewhere here, yeah, in the middle of the circle. <laughs> so just use your imagination. <laughs> and you can see the Brisbane city behind. Uh, and this is where, you know, um, this city in 2032 will be hosting the Brisbane Olympics as well. 
So this is an overview of UQ Cyber, uh, what we do and who are we. Uh, we, we are a consortium of different uh, practitioners and researchers across the university, including OSCERT. So uh, we're privileged to be uh, also hosting OSCERT here on campus, and they are the second oldest computer emergency response team in the world after the Carnegie Mellon CERT. So it's a, it's a privilege for us to be able to gain access as students and academics. And then through that, we are able to translate that into research and applied research, uh, and also moving into education with the courses uh, such as Bachelor of Computer Science, uh, Cybersecurity major, and the Interdisciplinary Master of Cybersecurity. And of course, a PhD uh, being a university. These are some of the research areas that we work on. Um, these are not the only research areas. It was just a higher level representation. So we cover law, criminology, policies, critical infrastructure, all the way to IoT and uh, you know, even uh, secure communications for space, cyber autonomy, and so on. And many of our uh, recent publications, I'm just giving a few examples from our school of ITWE, uh, this school in the banner. Yeah, so we, we have been quite active in uh, publishing in Q1 and A-Star and A conferences. So uh, I want to start the uh, overview and hopefully that sets the scene with other speakers. Uh, that's what is interdisciplinary. <laughs> it's used as a very common word. So I start with the multidisciplinary. So this is, uh, this is multidisciplinary, all the, the colors coming together in the same room, but not touching each other yet. And then cross-disciplinary is you know, they are, they are closer to one another. They are talking to one another, maybe even holding hands now. And then uh, interdisciplinary is when they are actually um, mingling and start starting to maybe work and publish in the intersection, which is really tough. Because when you publish in a journal in one area, they say you're not this nor that. So it's really, really difficult. Um, but then the, that's the utopian view, which is transdisciplinary, <laughs> which, which is a total mix. And, you know, it's kind of like the ingredients of a cake. Uh, so the, the sugar, the flour, and all those things all mixed together into the cake. Um, I believe that many of the programs, if we're honest to ourselves around the world, we are none of us are transdisciplinary. Maybe we are interdisciplinary at this moment. Yeah, we are working towards transdisciplinary. Okay. And my experience in the context of the definitions was at New Zealand, um, I did this across disciplinary, and then we moved towards the interdisciplinary in, in uh, UQ. So I'll focus on the center part, which is when we designed this, uh, we had in mind, uh, that should actually be four circles <laughs> because there are four main areas of uh, fields of studies with uh, cyber defense, criminology, leadership, and cryptography. And then we say that, okay, if we want to take in any students, you know, we have to do it radically, which is they need to unlearn what they have learned. Uh, they, so the unlearning would start with an interdisciplinary core first. So they'll, they'll, they'll be trained and, you know, the courses that they'll be taught doesn't require them to have any uh, technical experience and so on. And many of them are actually here sitting, standing, sitting in front of me today, you know, I, and they survive and they still smile at me. So I think it's, it's okay, you know. Uh, and, and then we, we move into the specialization. So we need a, like a T model. So um, first, you know, that these interdisciplinary considerations, right? For example, in assignment one, they are working on a fictitious uh, doomsday scenario where a country called Lucky Country uh, has a East Coast outbreak of medical uh, hospital networks being uh, out of power and that's caused by a cyber attack. And how are they going to write policies that help the short term and long term, uh, you know, recommendations for a fictitious department of prime minister, right? So, so that's, that's the context that they are thrown into immediately. They have to be able to think out of, oh, I'm going to do patching. No, no, you can't do patching only. You know, because there are people on the streets or in the hospitals. So you got to think about more policy and more organizational uh, considerations. And they move into the specializations, but sometimes a rigid specialization path may not be something that is for everyone. So we, we included uh, electives. 
I find electives a, a very beautiful thing. You know, when I was doing an undergraduate degree myself in Nanyang Technological University, one of my electives is choir. I actually went to take uh, choir as an elective and I actually enjoyed myself and I learned a lot about more about music, you know. And so, so things like that actually uh, nourished my learning experience. Uh, and also the other thing that we did radically, I think in the context of many master's degrees that we take in students from any bachelor's degree. Yeah, so this is uh, also a radical move, but so far so good, you know, they are able to get interviews, which is, which is a, a, a very positive sign <laughs> means that, you know, we are, we, are, we are almost there, right? So now we need to help them to get past to getting a job. There are, there are a number of people who also got their jobs as well. This is how it looks like uh, out of the Venn diagram. This is how it traditionally looks like. So what I mentioned just now was the, the lack of the need. To, so we don't need you to have a, a past experience inside this uh, field. And you can come in and we will train you if you don't have a foundation over six months. If you have the foundation, you can skip the six months and then you go into the specializations over 12 months. So each rectangle block is six months, although they are different size. And you know, six, 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 so it's about two years or one and a half years if you have the, if you have the background. So you can skip the foundation if you have the background. But what's interesting is also the capstone program at the end. This helps us to you know, place master students into the workforce earlier and before they graduate. So hopefully they, they get exposed to potential uh, employers and then you know, they, can, they can hopefully get a job uh, quicker. And so far, so good. Many of the Capstone students are starting to gain confidence and exposure. So a key component is uh, it spans two semesters. Um, you know, I was... Uh, I was advised that this is a model that is uh, something that would be nice to share to our Japanese audience. And hence I added this slide and, and I say that this, this, this is the way we, we would actually do it in, in two semesters. So the first semester would be uh, spend about one day a week developing the proposal and initial analysis of the problem, getting to know the company and the context. In the second semester, the students I expected to commit about three days a week uh, to execute a solution and then to ultimately write a report. The communication part is important as well. So this process is quite interesting because uh, CyberCX, for example, one of the companies that are very involved uh, as a sovereign company in Australia is that they say that it's not just working with students. They felt that they are able to work with people like consultants because it's like working with a consultant, consulting firm maybe a bit cheaper <laughs> also. And also you're working with the students and their academic uh, supervisors, right? Uh, and, and working the knowledge of data scientists or in cybersecurity people in UQ. So, so it's a win-win situation. It's also a low cost try kind of situation for the employer. So this is something that uh, we are very proud of. We also align our you know, we're not doing this in isolation. So we align our entire degree to the NICE framework by NIST in the USA. So it, um, we adopted it because it's, it's, it's starting to be the de facto framework around the world. Um, you know, what most of the time in the security sector, what NIST does, most of the rest of the world will follow in somehow or another. So our, all our courses are aligned to the NICE framework. Um, we chose not to be too restricted to the ACM guidelines because it's too um, focused on technical, even though, even though they, may, they, 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 they mention many other uh, aspects, law, policy, and all these things. But if you read their definition uh, quite correctly uh, and precisely, they start their sentence with, this is a computing-based discipline. <laughs> so the unconscious bias is there. <laughs> or, or the conscious bias is there, you know? So, so this is, this is uh, what we want to avoid. And so hence, we, we, we decided to follow the, the NICE framework instead. Although I'm a member of ACM, yeah. So, and many, many more. There are many, many frameworks. Um, 
you know, we can talk about them, but ultimately it's the fruit of the tree that matters. Yeah. So now we are hoping that our fruits are able to get into the workforce and in a very productive way. So some of the lessons learned, um, cross inter and transdisciplinary work is very hard to implement. <laughs> I think John can attest to that as well. And it needs buy-in from everyone. Uh, we also learned that the government and industry tells you the now skills, but as universities, we have a duty to think about the future, now and the future, right? So we, we have to start to plan. One of the ways is through the capstone projects because it allows you to work on something that the industry wants, but we can also input as a pseudo consultant, some of our more, um, you know, bleeding edge uh, technologies and, and trends. And we, should we cover breath or just specialize? This is also another consideration. And also we need to help them to be exposed to the, to the field in, in a fast moving area. The next thing is the media, HR departments and the general public are not really ready to move away from stereotypes of cybersecurity. So you think about, they, they try to put, you know, uh, ones and zeros, Mr. Robot, uh, socially uh, awkward person, Right, typing really fast, wearing a hoodie, you know, that kind of thing. So we need to get away from these stereotypes. It takes everyone to do that. So uh, consciously, if you look at the, the banners that we have, uh, we purposely um, did not put one, ones and zeros and dark backgrounds. Uh, we featured a woman uh, and we featured bright uh, settings. Yeah. So the semiotics are important. And also the job descriptions have to mature, like what Mary has shared just now about some, you know, they advertise for a sales position, but they are looking for people who needs software engineering ex ex experience, which is, is very uh, unfair to the, to the applicants. So we need more media featuring the diversity. You know, if we can, um, in Australia, we have this border security, border patrol uh, shows after dinner, right? You see the, the, the people coming in through the airports, uh, they, they, they actually get checked and all these things for biosecurity. Uh, we don't have such a show for, um, you know, we don't have such a show for exciting jobs like cybersecurity, you know. Uh, and, and I think it would be great if we can feature, you know, uh, maybe Kana Shinoda or Amy Roberts, you know, that as, as, as a feature uh, person in such TV shows. What can we do now? I think we just try our best to offer the best future proof curriculum and also offer great environments, which includes mentors, facilities and opportunities. I'm going to show you a few pictures very quickly over the next minute. Uh, some of the uh, student activities we do at UQ. Uh, this is, uh, you recognize the person in the middle is John, our moderator of this session. Uh, he led a team, uh, Kelsey, who's uh, sitting in front of me right now, and uh, Chris, who's uh, now working in Canberra and uh, Tim and Halsey, who are some of the top ranked um, CTF uh, competitors in, in, in the world, right? Then they, they came together, they formed a team to work on an Atlantic Council uh, Cyber 912 challenge. Cyber 912 is, um, 912 is the day after 9-11. So they are giving policy advice to a, to a fake uh, Prime Minister bought that, you know, the advice of what happens after a catastrophic cyber attack for a country. And they won the best written submission and overall third prize on their first try. Uh, of course, we also joined several other national competitions. And uh, this is linked to the, the, the theme of today as well, the Global Cybersecurity Camp, which is uh, run by Code Blue. Uh, as well, and uh, Blue Ink, and uh, thanks to Kana Shinoda for inviting us uh, to this competition. We also have some facilities. We have a, a Jiao SOC uh, Security Operations Center, understanding different models of operations, uh, learning, and also we have a device testing lab with our own Faraday's cage to do hardware, software, security, and uh, many other things like a cyber war room and so on. And we have an Industry 4.0 lab, uh, which mimics the entire energy production and manufacturing scenarios. So we are able to 
offer experiential learning, uh, which is a key part of our UQ strategy now. Uh, experiential learning is important. We need the students to experience what they are protecting before they go out into the work. So one thing for sure, and this is my final quote, which is from Claudia, CEO of uh, Townsville Enterprise in North Queensland. She said that, you know, to me in one of the meetings that we had, say one day, you cybersecurity experts are going to be like the accountants and lawyers. You'll be needed in every company or organization. And with that, uh, thank you. Thanks very much, Ryan. Um, hopefully you can all hear me again. I've swapped microphones in the, during Ryan's presentation. Um, so we'll hold the questions for the end from the audience, if that's okay. Um, I'd like to now invite Nakao-san to uh, give us his presentation when you're ready. Thank you. Yes, I, I'm ready. Okay, um, my, my name is Koji Nakao, and thank you very much for the uh, very kind introduction, two times, sorry. So the, my, my talk today is uh, try to, to obtain some high level approach to develop a good uh, educational framework for strengthen the interdisciplinary cyber security. I'm working for NICT and there the word NICT is a lot in the uh, previous presentation but as a distinguished researcher and work for the Yukon National University as a guest professor. So I, I work for Yukon University uh, master uh, degree, uh, master uh, course uh, students every week. And also I, as a cybersecurity advisor at the Japanese government uh, national uh, cybersecurity center. So, um, this is an ICT, this is Seoul National Research Institute of, in the field of ICT in Japan. And the content today is, uh, there are, I, I try to capture very, very high level, the approach uh, taken from the governmental strategic part or stru structural part approach, which is uh, uh, conducted in the university and the data driven approach and the collaborative approach and I try to summarize the, these four approaches in the last, last, last slide. So governmental strategic approach with consensus, which is uh, NISG, uh, the Japanese government, the uh, very high level meeting. So in Japan, we made our cyber security strategy in this year. So this is overview, maybe no, no time for me to explain the uh, detail, but the one of the focus is we are trying to target the cybersecurity for all. This including individual, the uh, local governments, or uh, university, or uh, the uh, the, uh, the kind of organization, etc. This is the uh, uh, little bit old picture, but the, this is the cybersecurity strategic headquarter meeting. So in the center of this picture. Uh, Mr. Sh uh, Abe Shozo is here, the previous uh, prime minister in Japan. I was sitting uh, uh, around here. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I did not see uh, from you. But this is the structure of the cybersecurity uh, the strategy at a uh, very high level. But today I focus on two issues. The one is the, this green part. And the other, the other is this, uh, the uh, red part. Green part is uh, try to conduct the kind of the specific measure promoting efforts for the stakeholder, which underpin for the foundation of economy and society. And you can see the, the third bullet, it's, I, I try to highlight, the University Education Research Institute this, uh, this strategy contained this statement, seminar training or risk management or incident response, supporting enhancement, enhanced measures in university, et cetera. So the, the Japanese government's uh, cybersecurity strategy contained this kinds of message. And as well as the such a kinds of message, this uh, promotion of R&D is also highlighted. 
So for example, advanced practical R&D to include the, to address this sub supply chain uh, risk or could be to develop the domestic industry or foundation of monitoring, analysis, analyzing and sharing attacks out of advanced research on cryptography. So this means the, this kinds of the uh, promotion are regarding advancement of the practical R&D is uh, written in the Japanese government, uh, the cybersecurity strategy may help for, for the university or the research uh, laboratory says to, to promote the cybersecurity uh, the activity. So not only such a kind of governmental approach, so I try to provide some kinds of a structure approach to develop the cybersecurity capability. So this is an example in the, which can, I can provide the, uh, the example of the cybersecurity classes in our entity, uh, which is a telecommunication company in Japan and Waseda University. As you can see, the, this kinds of block, uh, I, I don't have enough time to explain very detail, but the starting from the basic education in the, in the undergraduate students and the moving to the education of master students and more high level students. And as, as you know, this is the uh, list of the information regarding the undergraduate students, the uh, lecture, the, uh, you can see the overview of cyber attack and risk or instant uh, internet technology or post scan, vulnerability scan, infection malware. These are the, the including DDoS attack, DNS attack. These are very, very basic uh, technical, the uh, lecture. Uh, they conducted in Waseda University. And also this is the lecture for the master degree student. And that's a little bit high level based on the lecture of the undergraduate student practical exercise on the master you know, malware infection are conducted. So for example, attack method attack targeting to the vulnerable host or implementation of honeypot or monitoring analysis, et cetera. Et cetera. This a practical exercise program is uh, provided by NTT and the in the the uh, the class in Waseda University. This is a very uh, simple example regarding the uh, the uh, dynamic or sorry the implementation of the honeypot or the monitor and analysis. There are two kind of objective, the topics for the lecture and the exercise are, are the listed up here. So another example is the uh, dynamic uh, static memory analysis, and they uh, provide the, uh, several topics regarding this uh, specific issue, for instance. So this approach might be, the, of course, in the Luan, our uh, previous speaker, uh, provide the uh, detailed UQ, uh, the activity in the, uh, from the university perspective, but this is the one of the, uh, the same approach taken by the MTT and our city university. Data-driven approach, which is uh, the uh, utilizing the dark net or honeypot, the uh, kind of sensor. And as you can see, uh, this is the, the talk uh, con discussed in NICD, the cybersecurity laboratory. And uh, as you may know, the cybersecurity research, it's basically, basically not all, but basically, the data dream research to, to provide the real time uh, data collection, real time data analytic. And if there's no data, no cybersecurity uh, can be achieved. This is a map in the NICT. So if you uh, give me a one hour, uh, I can provide more detail. But the, uh, today I, I provide very, very uh, simply later in uh, regarding uh, nectar or honeypot, et cetera. Nectar is a kind of monitoring system by utilizing the dark net. Dark net is unused IP address. Then we have 30,000 uh, dark net monitoring uh, IP address space all over the world and collect many scam by malware or other backscatter, et cetera. So like this, this is the kind of picture but the, uh, maybe it's better for you to take a look. 
directory. This is the, uh, the real time uh, monitoring. And the, we got us uh, these type of scan from all over the world. This scan is basically a descending by the infected host by malware. So this is the statical data in the uh, starting from uh, 2011, but the Enicta uh, has the data from 2005. So as you can see the, the bar graph, the number of packets and scan is getting larger and larger. And the, this year, 2021, this is very similar, but the uh, recently, uh, as you may know, there contains a lot of the, uh, the kind of the, uh, the survey scan, which is uh, a kind of the children or sensors, rapid D or et cetera. So uh, we have to subdivide into the service, uh, service packets and a real attack packet uh, by, uh, by malware. This is the statical data, also the uh, top 10 destination port address in the over observed by nature. But the surprisingly, the uh, 30, or nearly 37% of the traffic of scan uh, may be related to IoT devices, according to our research. The, in our connection with the, such a kind of nectar activity, so we also developed the cure system, cybersecurity universal repository. So this is a visualization. We often are provided this kind of visualization. So initiated by a Dainove. So he, he made a talk in last week, I think. The, this is a set of data which obtained the QR system in NRCT. So for example, the darknet related data or live net data, malware data, or spam related data, Android, and the blogs and the art, which is the OSIN data, and the web-related data, honeypot data, threat intelligence, et cetera. So these data is are somehow the stored in the NICD big data. So we need to some in, in, in uh, correlation, intercorrelation among the uh, these data. It's a kind of data publisher or subscriber is a kind of the model in implemented in the QR system. So based on such a kind of cure, which has a big data, so we need to conduct and develop the Synex. This Synex project is newly started from this year. And the big issues are recognized in Japan. As you may know, the, uh, the cyber security products in Japan has very, very low security sufficient late. That is a very few of uh, the security products they originated from Japan. And there are some kinds of the, uh, the negative uh, the cycle of the uh, cybersecurity data shortage. That is no data, no R&D, that's no security products and no data, et cetera. So what Japan, we, we need to now do that now is to develop, implement the large scale collection and accumulation of real data, or study in a static analysis of real data, or evaluation of domestic security products, and generation and share of Japan uh, made a threat intelligence and easy to use the cybersecurity exercise platform based on the real data. So the Synex is a cybersecurity nexus. As you know, Nexus stands for the information connection between the parts of the system or a group of things. Then Nexus are provide the data collection of accumulation or start steady analysis and the using the HLD or the uh, SOC operation, evaluation domestic security products, and generation of sharing the domestic threat intelligence. This the type of function are uh, already included and plan in our Nexus, our cyber Cynex cy, cy system in NRC. This uh, picture, the uh, slide contains the cybersecurity factor and not only cybersecurity factors with Nexus, Cynex includes the cyber, National Cyber Training Center. So 
data-driven approach is uh, the uh, most important thing is without data, it's very hard for us to, to achieve the very good cybersecurity education and activity. So data-driven is might be the one of the uh, key core function. So next is collaborative approach is uh, conducting the national international cybersecurity project. Maybe time is very limited. I, I try to skip, but the one uh, uh, information proactive project is a kind of the for to proactive approach to for the cyber attack. And long long term analysis and malware analysis, and the of course a response for the the, the all those attack. This is a kind of honeypot. So I, I made a many slide, but the, uh, I tried to skip. This is a kind of the analysis by using the honeypot. And the, the another one is national project so-called the mitigate. It's, it's ongoing IoT malware research project. And they uh, try to detect the behavior or to, to improve the uh, removal technology. This is the structure of the, uh, the uh, mitigate project. So, but they maybe no time. So the it's a kind of multi connection between the several the technology uh, related IoT malware. So uh, I think uh, this slide can be shared later. So as for the international security project between the France and Japan is a one example, and this is the the kind of website in cybersecurity uh, the. Uh, or the uh, France and Japan uh, workshop. The, we are conducting the formal uh, method of cryptography for system security and the, uh, the privacy or event analysis, memory analysis or network security was ICT or ITS security. So there we are trying to cover many areas. But the most important thing is the conducting this kind of very deep discussion with uh, the France. And uh, from our Japanese perspective, we can uh, identify the several new uh, the kind of angle for the, uh, the cybersecurity approach. So strengths on the uh, trustworthiness or fundamental technology, including the uh, protocol validation, et cetera. Utilizing AI analysis and algorithm is one of the very big things for us to consider. Final remark. So uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I made it uh, many issue, but the governmental strategic approach and the stru structure approach under the university and the data dream approach taken by the NRCT or including Yokohama National University and the collaborative approach international and national project. So we need to have on the kind of combination is the full approach to our enforcement and the uh, strengthening the cybersecurity education. So uh, this is the final conclusion, but the uh, enhancement academic cybersecurity education important to integrate some of the approaches and to uh, improve the synergy and data-driven collaboration international can be very good approach to start to develop our the education system between Australia and Japan. And there are many benefits of information sharing cybersecurity. And the uh, last portion is cybersecurity between Australia and Japan. The establishment and maybe better for us to, to establish an academic cybersecurity workshop every year, for instance, and to, to share the data for cyber education it might be the good approach for us to start. So using the honeypot or sandbox or darknet, et cetera. Human resource exchange is also very important for us to, to improve, to consider. So very, very fast uh, presentation, but the, uh, thank you very much for listening. I, I, I'll get a uh, discussion later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nakao-san. And um, finally, for today's session, I invite Kikuchi Sensei for, uh, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not sure how much time can I talk. I think, I, uh, anyway. I think, I think we, can, we, can, we can go a little over time, Kikuchi-san. We're, okay. we're, we're a bit okay. off on the timing, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. And so uh, as a schedule, I just uh, spend the 10, 10 minutes about the introduction, about uh, some 
cyber security training program to independence. And um, once again, my, uh, my introduction was done by the Jones. And anyway, uh, let me a little bit add some uh, information about our university. Meiji is one of the private university. I belong to the School of Interdisciplinary Mathematical Sciences. It's a kind of the computer science, but um, although the name is interdisciplinary, but I, according to the definition of the alliance, it's uh, actually disjoint multidisciplinary uh, department because it's really hard to put together and collaborate to different specialties. But anyway, this is uh, my background and I have some students in this department. My, uh, my specialty was done and also I, I involved to the JPSAT coordination center. And then I really know the um, front end of the cybersecurity uh, industry, but I, I realized that uh, there is a gap between the industry and the universities. It's a little bit hard. I'm not sure which one is higher, but anyway, this is one of the recognition about um, uh, educational programs in, in Japan. So uh, today's um, panel, panels, uh, we have the questions on uh, what is the best educational framework? Uh, because we have the uh, very broad, broad topics to, to teach them, but it, it's really hard to uh, train them for all of the topics. So, uh, so actually today I have no answer for this, but I, I just want to introduce you to the three uh, training programs in Japan. One is the um, uh, CIDR, which is um, also belong to the NYCT, supported by the Japanese government. And the second one, second, two, second and the third are related to the, some competition, like a CTF. One is for the malware, one is for the privacy, data, data privacy. Anyway, uh, first one is the CIDR, which stands for the Cyber Defense Experience with Resource the re recurrence, but I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, this is a really uh, active one because um, uh, one of the important things about this project is governmental agency and local governments. And they are the target of the cyber attacks because um, governmental agency is very attractive for them. Uh, it has a high impact. And the second is uh, they are uh, skill, they are not skillful engineering. So therefore it's easy to compromise the, these attacks. So here is the website uh, mentioned about uh, some attacks uh, targeted to the Japanese government. So in order to address these problems, uh, this uh, CIDA project uh, established since 2013. So every year we have, uh, we, mm, we have the programs, more than 100 classes and uh, from the J Tokyo and also uh, 47 prefecture in Japan. And also uh, as, as you can see these uh, maps, uh, we have the more than 3000 people participate these programs. Uh, and also one of the nice things, it's free for the local government staff. And also we, uh, some staff, some people who are uh, working for the big uh, social infrastructure companies such as the um, public transportation and banking and so on. They spend uh, about uh, 500 euros for, for joining to these programs. But anyway, uh, here is the, um, uh, here is a way to how to uh, execute our training programs. NYCT is a Japanese representative governmental institute. They has a big data center called the side uh, Stabets located to here. And also they provide some um, virtual environment. Because of these ones, people can visit any local government, any local cities, they have the uh, uniform environment to trainings. And uh, here is a um, typical uh, programs of the CIDRs, uh, mainly uh, mostly it's, it's spend the two days. One for before the uh, trainings, 
they, uh, they have the online programs of spend for about one hour and to get some fundamental knowledge. And then uh, first days, they have some e experience, exercise. And for example, you can see this one. Uh, this is a shoot cyber attacks. And they are, they are required to how to defense, how to, how to have the communication to other agencies or something. And then after that, uh, this is a kind of the CTFs. But I, anyway, after that, they have some discussions. What should we do for this uh, incident handlings? And then finally, they have the uh, chance to reporting about uh, their experience. So this is uh, um, CITRES programs. And anyway, I hope that it helps to some experience and also improves the security knowledge. And also, I, I think the experience works very well. Experience, it really helps them to, even if they have some compromised incident. So, uh, okay. And here is uh, some of the scenarios because every year we have the new cyber incidents. So depending on the, so make adaptive to these new topics, new threat, cyber threat, uh, we prepare for the replace some new scenario. For example, you can see, for example, uh, malicious email offensives and also the CMS attacks and also malvertising, malicious advertisement. But anyway, every year we choose uh, what is the most serious, what is the new trend or some things and prepare for the environment and, and prepare for the, some quiz and uh, problems. But anyway, and however, the, this is a story about the before the COVID-19. After that, as you see, we have the serious because um, uh, CIDA programs force them to put together and face-to-face -face discussions. And this is the core of, core of the CIDA programs. However, in order to prevent the infections, infection of the, not, not computer virus, but anyway, uh, we provide online programs in this year. It also provides a virtual machine based experience. And also people can participate to these programs and can chat over the, some sort of the SNN styles and also taking the exams and also taking the lecture uh, provided by the videos, prepared videos. Anyway, uh, this is online ciders, but one problem is uh, not so many people want to choose this one because um, uh, the beginner of the net network security is afraid that even if they try, they choose these options. And if they have the problems, they had no way to ask the question to the answer. So some, most people choose the on-site training programs. Okay, let's go to the second one and the third ones. And uh, the second one is a kind of the CTF. And the problem of the um, security educational program is um, uh, their lack of the data. I completely agree with Nakao-san because he mentioned the importance of the data-driven studies. Japan's is very sec um, strong security regulations and many universities restrict, restrict students to have some uh, in, taking the mal malware into the campus. So therefore, uh, it's really malware is too risky to study them, to training them. And also students have no chance to have some mal real malware. And uh, even though they happen to have the incident, they are not allowed to report this. They are not allowed to export their experience. So this is the problems. So in order to address these problems, uh, we have the programs of the anti-malware engineering workshops. This is a kind of the uh, association, information processing Japan. And we have the annual conference of the CSS. And um, every year, we have the malware, malware contest called the MWS Cups. And then, and uh, one of the important things about this competition is we have some contract before the competitions. 
and the, it's a kind of the ND, NDA. However, it's more, more freedom. And the participants mainly have some under uh, contract. They have a chance to have true real leaders, including some Nakao san mentions and Nikta Darknet. It's a Darknet honeypot dealers. And also some company like the, you see the Soliton FFRI. The, uh, these are Japanese cyber security companies. They have the product and also provide the logs of the, their product. And uh, given these data, the students have a chance to somehow an analyze and trying to find the, how to read the logs or, or some things. So you can see uh, here is uh, some of the tasks. So given the JavaScript, which was on, which was uh, some sort of the encryptions, and try to do identify what is the message, what is the target address or some things. And also given some JSON data and given on the binary data, given on the EDR logs, they are trying to somehow find out the new messages or uh, trying to answer the quiz given by the competition, uh, given by the malware committees, uh, CTF committees. Okay, uh, here is uh, some screenshot uh, held in the 2019. Although the, after the COVID-19, we have done, uh, we, we have to shift this one to the on-site online versions, but it's really hard. Uh, you can see the more than 100 student participate for this month, including the student and also some younger staff in the industry. And also, uh, last one is about the privacy workshop. And uh, the problem is similar because the personal data is one of the confidential ones. So uh, any company are not allowed to provide the, these data for the security researches. So therefore, no real data set, no real ones. That this is the problem. So we have the prepare for the uh, prepared prepared data set, which has no problems of the privacy, which has no problem of the law enforcement. Anyway, uh, choosing the different type of the data, so income data, purchase data, location data, census data, and then we do some competition using the data anonymizations. Okay. Uh, here's the end of my talk. But anyway, um, I am really learned a lot about uh, difficulty in the interdisciplinary language and uh, interdisciplinary education. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kikuchi Sensei. Um, and thank you to, to all three of our speakers. It's, it was very interesting to see this theme emerge of data driven training. I know it's something that's very close to our our thinking here at the University of Queensland as well, um, acquiring data sets and then turning those and using those in, in meaningful training um, and education opportunities. I'm conscious of the time, so I'd like to, um, I, 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 I do have a prepared discussion question, but I wanna give the audience an opportunity first. So um, if I could invite um, anybody on the Zoom participation or perhaps uh, somebody in the room at the University of Queensland to, to run a microphone, if there are any, any audience questions first. Any audience questions? No questions here, John. We have a camera issue, so we'll just have to... Uh... Also, uh, okay, no problem. Um, attendees on Zoom, either in the chat or, or on the microphone, any questions for our speakers today? Okay, well, what I'm going to do now is um, I'll just quickly share my screen. Uh, hopefully that is visible. Um, just from oh, we do. We do have a question. Sorry, Zoom. Zoom goes funny once I um, once I share my screen. So I'll stop that. Okay. So, uh, yes, Pauline, feel free to unmute and ask your question. I think I'm unmuted. Uh, I we have a new data office of the Japanese government, and I wonder if. Um, 
one of the uh, two latter speakers could comment about what exactly that office is doing. Do we know yet? Sorry, uh, can I answer the question? Uh, this is Koji. Yes, please. Hi, Koji. <laughs> okay, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, I think the uh, the new our organization or the uh, ministry is uh, uh, data the DX DX uh, the ministry. I think so. Data the uh, transition or trans transformation. Uh, the, how, how to deal with the uh, digitalization in our Japanese economy. The, um, there such a ministry is a newly product, uh, produced and the, one of the department under the such ministry uh, to, to establish the cybersecurity team. So the, which uh, has now the, uh, providing to many, many uh, the experts but the not from the uh, according to minors, the there are very few are experts from university at this point. There are several the experts from the uh, the uh, the experience to to get the uh, Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic game in the, the security uh, cyber security team. So moving to the uh, DX uh, ministry for uh, different cybersecurity. And there are uh, still ongoing process and the, we have uh, several discussion how to achieve the good goal and how to develop the cybersecurity in the DX uh, uh, environment in Japan. But the, uh, I'm sorry, I, according to latest, my information is we don't have a uh, clear, the, uh, the uh, kind of, approach or design how to develop but the uh, it's it's the uh, very important for us to uh, to share that the uh, cyber security team is uh, getting very powerful now so I think we, we need to support from the university or uh, including NICT to uh, strengthen such a kinds of DX or cyber security team as much as possible. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can uh, uh, answer uh, correctly, but the that is uh, what I I got uh, previous uh, according to the discussion with them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John, are you there? <laughs> Seems like your screen is frozen. John, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm here. I wasn't sure if the if that was um, an issue at my end or or at uh, Nakao San's end. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 yes you can. Okay. We do froze for uh, ten seconds. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have. Uh, we're we're over time, but I I was keen to to have this discussion um, and apologies for the Google translation into Japanese, but hopefully it's it's okay. I went I went to <laughs> Japanese and then back to English and the question was the same. So I think that's good enough. Um, so we, we talked today about interdisciplinary education. Ryan and I have designed a, a master's program that, that, that we feel embraces this. But we, we still fight as educators and, and I think our, our graduates as well fight this technical focus in, in industry and with employers. And, and Mary had that question in the earlier session where she applied for a non-technical role, or, or as I understood, apply for a non-technical role, which, which we say is important in cybersecurity, uh, but, but only to, to be asked to prove technical skills. When we designed our master's program, we spoke to leaders of government departments and they say, we want people who understand the business and the compliance and the governance, not just the technical. So, so we, design we design education programs, we teach our students, yet, yet our students go to industry and, and they want to talk technical skills. So, so what, what can we do as educators and as an industry to, uh, to begin to address this problem, to make sure that our students are finding the roles that 
that that we believe are are necessary and that industry feedback says are necessary. Um, I might throw first to you, Ryan, if you've got some thoughts on that. It's, it's uh, something that doesn't happen overnight. Uh, first, I think unity across the industry and the, the academics and the government, everyone has to be aligned uh, to, to, to sing from the same uh, song sheet, uh, you know, the, the, the talk about the same message. And that will help with firstly setting the scene. And the second one is, uh, I think for educators, uh, we, when we engage the industry partners, maybe we could also uh, ask specifically about the non-technical jobs that they would like us to fill. And, uh, you know, so like yesterday, I was just approached by a power company, uh, which are looking for uh, non-technical people uh, uh, as student interns uh, for cyber resilience work and governance work. So um, I think it's starting to improve. Yeah, and I believe as we continue our message, it'll be, it'll be better. Uh, thanks very much, Ryan. Uh, Kikuchi Sensei, some thoughts from you? Yes, um, I agree that Ryan and uh, it really helped to have the industry partner to run the what is the requirement and what should we train for our students. And, um, uh, and also, uh, John mentioned a very interesting topics that uh, uh, compliance and the governance it's really hard to teach them and also make them to motivate to run for that because uh, it's far from the, their daily lives because no student have the experience to the working in the industries. They, uh, even though I, have, I can lecture them, so what is the governance, what is the compliance, what is the privacy law regulation, and, but uh, they sometimes are taken, taken up and don't want to run about for that. So I, I agree that uh, Ryan uh, suggests one of the idea of the T, T sharp curriculums. I, I guess uh, as my, my understanding, T sharp T is uh, very uh, right. However, the very broad knowledge, including the compliance, knowledge and the policy and so on, te including technical. And the one is uh, more thing, uh, more specialities including, for example, network administration, routing, packet analysis, cryptography, but any, any of the one is, is better. Maybe the T or Pi is better. One, two specialties help them a lot. But anyway, uh, actually it's one of the problems. Um, we, we, know, we know what is the importance, what is the requirement from the industry, but it's really hard to train, suggest our students to make motivation to run for that. Uh, thanks very much, Kuhuchi Sensei. I, I like the suggestion of a pie-shaped program. Perhaps, perhaps Ryan, we need a double major in our masters. Um, and yes. Naka, Nakao-san, uh, any comments from you so, on this question? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. The, I, I think I, I also do support Ryan and the Kuhuchi Sensei and the but the, um, I, I'd like to introduce the, some of the activity in the standardization organization, which is ISO, SC27. Uh, I am also work for the IC27. And the, as, as you may know, the most very important and famous uh, standard, which is called ISO IC27002, which is a security control, information security control, uh, to be applied for the organization or not only organization, but the governmental agency, et cetera. So latest revision of uh, 2702 contains the uh, three major, four, sorry, four major the approaches for uh, conduct or to develop the security control. One dimension is organizational control. Second dimension, dimension is people control, and third dimension is physical control, and last dimension is techni technological control. And the, some of the controls 
are purely related to non-technical control. And that is to say, in 2702, the combination with 2701, uh, as you may know, the information security management system, ISMS, is uh, often used for certification for uh, information security, right? including cybersecurity. And the most of the Japanese are, for example, the organization may contain such expert uh, to, uh, to conduct the management or the establishment of information security management ISMS. The people who work for the ISMS information security management is a uh, very few knowledge about technology. That is to say, they don't have uh, any chance to see the I, uh, firewall log or the IDS log, etc. However, they have a very uh, large, broader knowledge uh, in throughout the, uh, maybe they have very uh, high level cryptography information and very uh, high level, the IoT information, etc. So as uh, Christian said, there's such a kinds of the broader, the horizontal, uh, the approach is are very needed to very fit for the non-technical -tech uh, expert. So some of the university in Japan uh, have already the kind of course to develop the management expert. So not uh, go into the detail technological point, but they have the uh, kind of the information or the knowledge, how to develop the security policy, how to manage the incident, or how to uh, coordinate on the stakeholder, et cetera. So such a kinds of the uh, horizontal, the approach for the security management or management experts can be the very good fit to, uh, to, uh, to develop the non-technical expert regarding the cybersecurity. That is the um, very uh, just supportive or additional information from the pre two previous speaker. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting. Any, any response there from Ryan or Kikuchi-san? I strongly agree. Thank you. Um, if there are no further questions online or in in the room, uh, Ryan, is any any questions in the room? Remy, thank you very much. Um, I'm not a specialist in cyber security, so I just want to put that out. But I'm one of the associate professors at the University of Queensland Business School. And sometimes we have this uh, gap between what we teach and what the industry actually wants. So I just want to give a quick comment on, on that and some kind of suggestions which may not be technical. So I agree with uh, Ryan that um, there needs to be a lot of involvement with um, industry partners. So how do we break that down? So they, maybe you need to have more on the advisory board of your programs. So if you have more involvement from the industry and they're on your advisory board, they might be able to tell you how you might be able to manage this. Next is involvement in developing your curriculum that those guys from the industry should must be involved in your curriculum development. So then they can see what you're doing and then they can yes. promote that awareness of the need to also take the non-technical pathway to cyber security seriously. And lastly, um, we do invite guest lectures, uh, lecturers into our classes. Yep. And again, some of these people from the industry can be there. So um, it helps them to see exactly what you're doing in the classroom. I'm sure you're already doing some of this. Yes, <laughs> so yeah. I guess that if we put this into practice and we continue to um, talk about it and continue to narrow that gap between what they perceive and what they're doing, that at the end of the day, we might get to a place where we're on the same page. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Remy. Thanks. Thanks very much, Remy.
Um, look, I, I think we should really close this session. I'd like to say thanks very much to, to uh, Professor Ryan Koh, Professor Hiraki Kikuchi, and uh, Koji Nakao-san. Thank you very much for your contributions today. Um, and the audience, I'll, um, I'll just throw to Ryan. I believe he's got some closing remarks. Uh, and thanks very much, everybody, for, uh, for your engagement this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we, we want to thank uh, Nakao-san and also uh, Kikuchi-sensei uh, for your invaluable in contributions. And also we want to thank the team for making this session um, very successful. Thank, thanks to John, thanks to Remy for chairing the previous session and the previous two speakers as well. Um, you know, uh, Kana Shinoda, thank you for your contribution to the session and also uh, being our Japan headquarters. Uh, and also at, uh, we have two Kanas running the two headquarters. Yeah. Also the Kana Smith uh, running the Brisbane headquarters. Yeah. So thank you very much. And also the team uh, around them and around at Blue Inc. as well. And of course, uh, we also want to thank, um, you know, our, our, our sponsor, which is the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, Australia and the Australia Japan Foundation for their strong support. This is a series of uh, many more. And, you know, uh, Nakao-san mentioned an annual workshop. This is, this is it, we are doing it. So we look forward to, you know, having uh, another round in the coming year, uh, hopefully in person in uh, either of our venues. And uh, yeah, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And thank you very much once again for your attendance.